Okay, today we're going to try rewriting them in specific terms. So the first two they want us to rewrite in terms of cosine and then simplify if you can. So we're looking for cosine in different identities here. So let's see, sine squared, 1 minus cosine. So if we look in the Pythagorean identities, I see this equation, this identity right here kind of deals with sine and cosine. So if I have sine squared of theta, and I want it to be cosine squared of theta, think of how we would move cosine of squared of theta to the other side. We would subtract it. So sine squared of theta would equal 1 minus our cosine squared of theta. 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And we have 1 minus cosine of theta in the denominator. Now it looks like we could just cancel stuff out, but we can't, right? You can only cancel stuff out if it's like a factor out in front or if the entire thing is exactly the same, which it isn't. But if you remember from our old factoring days, if you had like x squared minus 64, those are two things that you could square root. So it was the difference of squares. So the way you'd factor that is you'd square root each one, put one with the plus, one with the minus. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 64 is 8. So you'd say x plus 8 times x minus 8. That's what we're going to do here. Both of these terms in the numerator, you can square root them. They're both perfect squares. So the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of cosine squared would just be cosine. So we can factor the numerator to 1 plus cosine of theta times 1 minus cosine of theta. All of that is over 1 minus cosine of theta. Now we have a group that is exactly the same, the 1 minus cosine of theta. So we can cancel out the group for the group. And all we're left with then is 1 plus the cosine of theta. That would be our final answer. You can't simplify any more than that. Okay? So let's try another one. Again, you just you gotta play around with these to get good at them. So don't just get frustrated if you can't get the first one right away. Just gotta erase some stuff here. There we go. Okay. And we're back. Secant of theta minus tangent of theta sine of theta. We're getting it all into cosines. So secant is 1 over cosine. Uh, let's see, tangent, if we look up here, tangent is sine divided by cosine. We're multiplying that by sine of theta. Which if you multiply a whole thing by a fraction, you just multiply it in the numerator, or you can put the over 1 there. So if we kind of clean that up, there's nothing we could do with 1 over cosine yet. Over here, oops, not equals, it's minus. In the numerator, we have sine of theta times sine of theta, so we can say that's sine squared theta. The denominator is cosine of theta times 1, so cosine of theta. So hopefully you notice that these have the same denominator now. So we can merge it, right? But last time we broke apart a fraction like that, but now we're going to merge it to 1 minus sine squared of theta in the numerator over cosine of theta in the denominator. And then if you look at your properties here, 1 minus sine squared of theta could be derived from this one. Cosine squared, if you just moved the sine squared of theta to the other side, you'd have to subtract it. So cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. I know I'm running out of time here. Now, if you remember your old, you have like two cosine thetas on the top. You have one on the bottom, so one of them would cancel out. If you had something squared, like x squared over x, it would just come out to x. So this will just come out to cosine of theta.